business rule is a concept used to express the business logic of our system. Usually our systems have many, many rules and each rule is applied to a different subset of our domain. And we've combined all these rules together, we get the whole program. So these business rules are usually written in between the codes. So for example, if you're programming Java and you have many classes, the business logic might be um, somewhere in one class and some other parts in another class. So let's see what a rule looks like, because we talked about business rule, but most of a rule in most of a rule engines look pretty much the same. There is always the when part and the then part. The when part is sometimes called left hand side, while the then part is always called, is sometimes called, I'm sorry, right hand side. The when part defines when the rule will fire, while the then part will, defines what the actual rule does. The when part in rules is based on a concept called pattern matching, a mechanism used to see if the input object matches the pattern we provide. A pattern is usually the first, our first example of a rule written in rules with a DRL. And we see that uh, we have uh, a rule keyword and the name of a rule. And the name of a rule is a string so that we can write whatever we want inside. It's really convenient when you want to understand what this rule does. Anyway, this is very simple. We have the when part. The when part um, has a pattern matching. You see the pattern matching is basically just the name of a class, the Java class in the when part. And this is the first example of a pattern. You see two things in here. The first thing is a condition. The one that checks is uh, the first name is null. And the second one is a binding that binds a field of the input data to this variable, which is called dollar $u. And this is a variable that we're going to use in the consequence. So the consequence, as I've told before, is the part in the then part and what happens when the rule will fire. So when the rule will fire, we'll call this validation, which is probably something defined elsewhere, maybe a global, global variable, something like, like that. We call the error method in a similar fashion to what we did before. For example, we have multiple validation. In this example, we are validating two different Java type. The first one is input data, and the second one is address data, maybe another DTO of the user inserting his own address. So they're very similar. We are validating whether the first name is null and the address is rule. But um, as you may notice, we aren't defining here the order in which this rule will be executed. This is very important. It's due to the declarative nature of DRL. This is a very important feature to handle the complexity when you have a large amount of rules. As I said before, the order of the evaluation of the rules is defined only by the data we provide. These two rules are atomic and are isolated. If I feed to the engine only the input data, then only the first rule will fire. And if I feed to the engine only the address data, only the second rule will fire. The rule engine the rules guarantees that the order of the execution is correct and that it will evaluate our rules in the fastest way possible. This is a great advantage because the algorithm underneath is very, very fast.